What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel and today's video is going to be creating an automated Sudoku solver inside of Python. Okay, so the idea behind a Sudoku puzzle is you end up with the numbers one through nine in every row, every column, and every three by three block of nine values. Um, and so as a person solving this, you typically would look for blocks that have fewer white spaces um, and maybe more crossing values and start with the easy one. But to create a program that does it, it has to be a little more orderly, a little more structured than that. And um, so what we are going to do is we're going to create a program that iterates through the, uh, through the Sudoku puzzle that we give it. And it checks what numbers are valid for what squares and it'll create a solution at the end. So um, I think the process of how this makes sense from a code standpoint is gonna make more sense if we just get into it. So let's just get into it. Um, so I took the liberty of grabbing two examples from the internet. Uh, you can grab whatever puzzle you want or you can use the exact same ones I have, but I already typed them out in a grid uh, matrix format. So this is basically just a list of lists. Um, and I suggest if you have a specific puzzle that you want to follow along with, you type it in in this format as well, because that makes it kind of the easiest to iterate through. Um, it really is a matrix. A Sudoku puzzle is just a nine by nine puzzle. And so one more thing that I'm just going to do right in the beginning is I'm going to import NumPy. And the reason for that is if you saw this puzzle, even uh, after we solve the puzzle, we're going to want to display it in the terminal for the user. And if you print out something that looks like this, uh, it doesn't print out as a nice matrix. It prints out um, just as one long row. But you, if you use the NumPy built-in matrix tool and then feed it in the puzzle, it's a really nice formatted um, matrix. So it looks a lot better. We're going to use this format for displaying the outputs. So um, that's just one more thing about that. If you don't want to import NumPy for some reason or you can't, uh, I guess you don't have to. You'll just have one long row with all the information in it and it won't look as good. Um, but let's actually start writing some code. So one thing that we're going to do for every block in the puzzle is check if it's a valid result. So what I said before, and actually I'm going to pop over to a quick display here. Um, if you have a Sudoku puzzle, the way our program is going to work, we'll start with the top left. And you saw in the matrices I made, any value that we don't, or uh, any space that we don't already know the solution for when we start it up, I put a zero in there. Um, in, instead of a blank space, you could put a blank space in there, but I put a zero in as a placeholder and our program is going to go through the matrix and any space that has a zero, it's going to start checking to see based on row, column, and three by three block, if each number is available. So it'll start by checking is one okay. And it'll see that there's a one in the row or a one in the column, depending which one you put first, it'll say no. And they'll go is two valid. And it'll check for the row, it'll check for the column, it'll check for the block. And then if two is valid, it's gonna move on. Um, and it's gonna hold a two in there, but then it's gonna check the next space for the exact same series. And it's going to do one. No, I can't do a one. It, it, could I be a two? And now it's going to see, no, I can't do a two because it's going to read that there's a two there. Can't do three, can't do four. But as soon as it gets to a block, which if, if every number that was selected isn't the right number, it was just valid at the time, then what's going to happen is the code's going to start clicking backwards. And then, so say theoretically, the first number that was valid for this one was two, and you got all the way to the last number in your puzzle. Um, and that one, there was no valid solution one through nine because this was a two instead of the next available number, which would be like a five. Um, well, this code is going to click all the way back until it finds a solution that is valid. And so if it has to go all the way back to the first loop, as long as you set this up to be recursive code, then it's gonna come all the way back to the top one, increment to a three, and then keep moving on. That'll make a lot more sense, I think, once we program it. So let's just start programming it. So a valid check is going to be check that the row, the column, and we're going to pass in what value we want to check it for. And we're going to do this because we're asking it to check through all of the possible numbers for each space inside the Sudoku. So we're going to 
let's just say right in here, check row, column, then three by three block, okay? And so we were given everything we need to check all of this data as long as we call the actual puzzle inside this function. You could pass it in and you could return it, but if you just make it a global inside of your function, then you can use it the whole time. Um, so let's go ahead and say, let's uh, start by checking the whole row. So for I in range, and we're going to do zero to nine. And if you don't know about Python for loops, it's, um, it's non-inclusive on your endpoint. So it's, this is actually saying we're going to do I is equal to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, but not nine, which is perfect because in code counting starts from a zero, not a one. And so even though there are nine columns, that actually means we have zero through eight. Um, Okay, so for i in uh, range 0 through 9, and what we're going to check is if puzzle at row, so we're going to hold the row constant, and we're going to iterate through using that index value, and we're checking to see if that's equal to the value that we're checking it against. So say we wanted to see if the top left was valid for a 2, we're going to go through the row and check at position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, oh, and we hit a 2. If you hit a spot that's equal to that um, value, then what we need to do is we need to return false. And instead of doing like an else return true, we are going to go on and check the next condition because it's not just, um, it's not just, well, as long as there's nothing else in that row, it's if there is something in that row, it's false. Otherwise, we have to check these other conditions. So next is going to be pretty similar for i in range, and then we're going to check 0 through 9 again. But this time we're checking columns, and so it's a little bit different. If puzzle at position, but we're not going to do column then i, we're going to do i then column. Because the way you address a specific item inside of a list is with row and then column. You give it two index values. And so what we're saying now is, okay, hold the column steady and then iterate through the whole, uh, through every row. So now it's the same condition though. If that value is equal to whatever we just looked up in the table, then we have to return false, okay? And so row and column are really the easy ones in this, uh, in this programming. A more complicated one is going to be finding the x start and the y start because um, if you think of the box that you're checking if we give them a value let's pull one of these up if we want to check a value here the x start position is zero but if we give a position here the x start value is also zero so zero one and two in the terms of columns or rows are all supposed to start from position zero zero as you check your box and it's only supposed to go three and then three, four, five are the next one, and six, seven, eight, check the third one. So essentially, we need something that corresponds zero, one, and two, all to the value zero, and then three, four, and five, all to the value one, and then uh, six, seven, eight, all to the value of two, but then it actually has to start from zero, three, or six. So Luckily, Python has a uh, piece of math that's built in that we can use called floor division. So um, and I'm just going to program it and then talk about it real quick. But if we look at the column divided by three, floor divided by three, which is the forward slash twice, this is saying division rounded down to the nearest integer. So this is a super handy tool that Python happens to have built in. But what we're saying is, divide the column by three and then round down. And so if you think about the columns zero, one, and two, they're all going to round down to zero. And then the column three, four, and five divide by three are all going to round down to one. So that's super useful, but the actual X start position, remember, was that times three. So um, that's how we're gonna figure out where to start for the X. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the Y's, just with row instead of column. And we're going to create a variable called y start. And then those are the two positions that you're going to start in. And then we're going to create another for loop to check for valid conditions. And we're going to say for i in range 0 to 3. And we're going to check if puzzle at positions y start plus i. And 
then J X X start. Sorry, you gotta be gotta be careful with your typing and getting the X's and Y's right. And X start plus J. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a this is a nested for loop. So we need for I in range zero to three, and then for J in range zero to three. And we need to nest that for loop in there because we're going one, two, three, and then going to the next row down, one, two, three, and then the next row down, one, two, three, and checking, uh, you know, nine different values, but it's really three values in three different rows. So it's three columns inside three different rows. And that's why we use an I and a J indexer variable. And we're checking to see, just like the previous two, if those are equal to the value that we're checking against. And if they are, then we're going to return false. And now we have finally checked all of the conditions that could cause failure. And so if none of those returned us out of the program with false, then we're gonna return true because that means the value is valid. Okay, so um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to actually solving the puzzle because so far we've created um, a way to check if an individual space is valid for an individual number but we haven't created the code that's going to actually go through the entire grid and check each space against each possible value so to do that i'm going to create a um, function that i'm going to call iterate and i'm calling it that because it's going to iterate through this loop numerous times each time it finds a valid number, it's going to go on to the next space and iterate through that one. Unless it doesn't find a valid number, then it's going to actually click back one space and iterate to the next value in there. And so I'm calling it iterate. You can call it solve whatever you want. This is the actual main driving loop of the program. And just like our previous function, I'm going to call the global puzzle. And then for I in range zero to nine so just like before global puzzle put that on its own line and then for i in range zero to nine and for j in range zero to nine so we have another nested loop here and the reason we're doing this is we're saying we're going to check through every single space in the function so we're checking zero through nine over and over and over again nine times so again i already said this but in the ranges it goes zero to nine not zero to eight because it's not end inclusive so you do need to go one higher than the actual total number of loops okay but now what we're saying is if puzzle at position that's going to be i by j is equal to and we're going to check if it's equal to zero because those are the ones that we need to solve for and when you do equals two you do two equals signs and we're checking that's equal to zero and now let's set up a loop that's actually going to call that valid checker so we're saying if we've found an empty space which is a zero in the sudoku for number in range and now instead of doing zero to nine we're going to do values one through ten so just like before what we actually want this to check for is the numbers one two three four five six seven eight or nine so to do that we're actually telling it start at one go till nine you have to go one higher because it's not inclusive so um, then we're going to say okay for all of those values check if it's valid at row and then column and then number right so those are the three things that it needs to get so we're going to say well what's our variable that's row it's i what's our variable that's column it's j and then what's our variable that's the value it's num so that's our number placeholder and what we want to do now this gets to the point of doing like nested function calling so this is the way of doing like backtracking recursive code if we do find a valid number it's time to go on to the next one so what we're going to do is we're going to set puzzle at that position ij that we just checked we're going to set that equal to that number for the time being and then we're going to go through and iterate again and the beautiful thing about this function is it's going to look through for a zero value so as long as we set this value equal to that new number 
and then call iterate again, that number is no longer going to get checked because now it has a placeholder being held for it. And then what we need to do is if iterate does ever complete, but we haven't solved the puzzle, we need to set that variable puzzle at position I J we need to set that back equal to zero so that the next time it clicks back a level and runs iterate again, it'll check that space again. Because now what we've said is, hey, the function finished and there are values that are not valid and there are still unsolved va values. Um, and so we've run through the entire realm of possibilities and we don't have a solution. So we need to punch backwards and keep setting one variable at a time or uh, one space at a time back equal to an empty until we find a valid loop. So I've probably done a lot of talking that maybe was more confusing than the code we wrote, but I hope that that makes sense. And so once we've done that for all of the values, we return. And at the end of all of this, I'm going to actually remove the print statement from before we run everything, and I'm going to put it in here. So back at this initial for loop where we started the iterations, that's where we want to print the solution once it finishes. And then the only other thing we have to do is actually call the function to start up when we run our program. So let's see, why am I getting a, <laughs> I forgot a colon. Okay. Um, so I think that you can let it automatically reformat if you want. I think that this should work. So let's just go ahead and run it. Let's take a look again. We're running it for this puzzle, which has got uh, 000401. So that's this puzzle. Let's just run our function and take a look. Okay, so we get 928431576. You can see if you were to print this out or stencil it into the, um, draw those numbers over top of it, 6135782949. Yeah, this looks good. We don't have any repeats in any rows or columns that I can see. Uh, if you notice a problem with it, let me know in the comments below. Let's go ahead and check it against one more puzzle. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this one just puzzle and then change this guy to puzzle two. So uh, now it'll check against the other puzzle, which is 00028, that should be this one. Yep, 415-763-928, 417-863-259, yeah. Okay, so we just created a program which really was, I mean the actual functional part of this code was not even 40 lines of code. Like a lot of these lines are just holding the puzzle. Um, and we created a solution that can solve any Sudoku. So hopefully you found this useful. If you have questions about specifics in uh, this or things that you'd like to see in a future video, just let me know about in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can or make a video on that topic if there's enough people asking for it. Um, this is kind of the basics of how most recursive looping programming is going to work. So understanding the sort of concepts we covered here are going to be super, super important for your programming. Um, and if you ever want to impress someone and they don't know that you wrote this program, just ask them to give you a really hard Sudoku and uh, punch it into this and give them a solution back in like 40 seconds. So hopefully you found that useful. I hope you found it fun. I hope uh, your Python programming journey is going well. And if you have found this or anything else on the channel useful, I really appreciate a subscribe to the channel, like on the video. It helps me out a ton, helps me continue making great content. So thank you all for your support. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.